One year after Beyblade Dex was released, I now present to you the best parts and combos based from the data that I have gathered throughout that one year span. Before we start, I would like to give a shout out to our new channel members. Thank you and I really appreciate your support. If you are not yet a member, please consider becoming one so that you can gain early access to my contents like stats update videos and members only posts where I show more specific statistics and analytics. This statistics and analytics update is the culmination of my year-long data gathering from different parts of the world. You already know by now that the data that I am presenting comes from various countries, from their tournaments as well as other kinds of competitive plays. At the time of recording, I have gathered 11,775 battles and by multiplying it by 2 results to the number of combos that were collected. Note that you can find all the links to my sources in the description below. This is my 8th update for this video series and if you are new to the channel, I advise you to watch the past episodes, especially the two previous ones, to know more about the statistical categories that you will see here. I am using actual results to rank parts and combos instead of the opinion-based tier list. Let's start first with the general stats for the best parts. The most popular or most used blade, regardless of what beat and ratchet were used, is Phoenix Wing, which has now overtaken Hellside for the top spot, and Wizard Rod at third. Take note that this is a year-long data and those released earlier has the advantage. I'm sure Wizard Rod will eventually claim the top spot in a couple of months given how popular it is nowadays. Meanwhile, the most popular beat is still the Undisputed Ball. Until today, Ball has always been the most used blade mainly because of Hellsight and now with Wizard Rod. I don't think there is any other beat at the moment that can dethrone it. Taper is second but is closely followed by Point, Flat and Rush. For Ratchet, 360 is mostly used which I believe is due to it being the oldest part. It is still common in 3 on 3 lineup with 560 and 960 as the other two. The blade with the highest win rate is Wizard Rod with a whopping 64.16% while the Hell's Chain in second is 10% behind, followed by Hellside. Wizard Rod is currently a must-have in tournaments and it is very hard to counter, especially with a solid statistics like this. For the beats, Ball is on top of win rates but right next to it is Orb and Hexa. The best stamina blade has already transitioned from Hellside to Wizard Rod, but Ball has still remained as the standard stamina beat. Interestingly for Ratchets, 370, 570, and 960 are the top 3 in win rates. Ratchets may have the least effect out of the 3 parts of a combo, but it is important to see what statistics tells us. The blade that has the highest points per win is Drone Buster with over 2 points per win followed by Shark Edge and Viper Tail. These are riskier blades, but if you can manage to control them, then you should consider having them in your lineup. The beats on the other hand for this category are Axel, Gear Flat, and Low Flat, or any flat type beats that you are comfortable with. The ratchet of choice are 160, 580, and 360. 580 might be a little raw in data since it is not commonly used. If we have PPW, there is of course the PPL or the points per loss. You should be aware of how much does a combo, or in this case a part, can lose a point. The less PPL, the better. The top blades for this stat line is Drand Buster, Drand Dagger, and Shark Edge. Given that attack types have a low stamina, they often lose spin faster, resulting to losing one point for most of the time. Attack types are also constantly moving, so knocking them out is not easy so they usually lose less than 2 points. The beats that can help you lessen your points per loss are Axel, Flat, and Low Flat. Ratchet has a clear winner in 160 and the numbers also prove that it can really help prevent the knockouts. We now proceed to the efficiency rating which incorporates win rate, PPW, and PPL. If you are new to the channel, it is basically the impact of wins minus how bad are the losses. I advise you to watch my update number 6 where I explained more about it. The blade that excels in this category are Wizard Rod, Grand Buster, and Phoenix Wing, which is basically the current meta. The most efficient beats are Rush, Orb, and Point. Ball and Flat are also a good option. 
160 is again proving how efficient it is, followed by 370 and 960 for the ratchets. The blades with the best offensive rating after year 1 is Drun Buster at first, Phoenix Wing second, and Viper Tail third. Offensive rating is simply multiplying its win rate and points per win. For bits, Rush, Point, and Gear Point are the top 3, while Ratchet have 160 on top and behind it are 370 and 960. I define defensive rating as simply denying points from your opponent. So far, the blades that are very good at it are Wizard Rod with Tyranobit and Grandbuster far behind. You can also attribute point denying by taking in 1 point instead of 2 or 3 points. The bits with a good defensive rating are Orb, Ball, and Rush. Top choice for Ratchet is 160, while the next 4 Ratchets are very closely ranked. This is the only statistical category here where I added my personal twist in the formula. That's why it is called EPR or NDEV's power rating. I updated the formula by splitting it into a weighted offense and weighted defense, then getting their average. Directly using offensive rating and defensive rating makes the result a little skewed, so I added coefficients to balance it. With my own formula, the results show that Wizard Rod is the top blade of the year. Second is Phoenix Wing, and third is Hell's Chain. Grandbuster and Tyranno Beat are 4th and 5th respectively. The 5 best EPR beats are Orb, Ball, Point, and Rush, while the top 3 ratchets are 370, 160, and 960. We now apply EPR to the best combos after year 1. Take note that this time I raised the cutoff to having at least 100 battles collected to set the bar higher. To further explain EPR, the baseline win rate which I consider as good for a combo is 60%. I give 10% more or 1.1 to the weighted defense since it is more about how often you win to deny your opponent from scoring, while I give weighted offense less 10% or 0.9 of its value because its points per win will have more weight. This leads to the other half of the equation which is the PPW or PPL. My baseline for them is 2 points and by amplifying it to 20 will result to 40 which sets up a 60-40 split of the equation. Then I adjusted the 20 and made it times 25 for PPW while also adjusting PPL to times 15. By averaging the weighted offense and weighted defense, it goes back to my baseline of 60-40 split but now with the coefficients that I applied. So at number 10, we have Phoenix Wing 360 Taper. Taper Beat was the initial choice for Phoenix Wing and it won the first G1 tournament. It is not as popular nowadays but it certainly is competitive. At number 9, we have Phoenix Wing 960 Orb. After Taper, Orb became the next beat of the month for Phoenix Wing. It shows that defense or counter-attack build can also work for the blade. At number 8, we have Hell's Sight 360 Ball. Before Wizard Rod, Hellsight was the perfect ball handler. It was very popular and the usage rate that I have shown you before proves it. It was not as dominant as Wizard Rod because of its recoil that can sometimes work against it. At number 7, we have Night Shield 560 Rush. This combo is designed to consistently beat attack types. Rush provides a good dodging capability with its motion and at the same time enough stamina to outlast attack combos. With some luck, it can even knock out Wizard Rod. At number 6, we have Wizard Rod on Hexa. Hexa was the early favorite choice for Wizard Rod and it works with either 560 or 570. It is a combo that features a very good defense and stamina. I grouped the two variants together for an extra slot in the top 10. At number 5, we have Phoenix Wing 960 Point. Another Phoenix Wing combo but this time it is more balanced with point build. It still has the aggressiveness like Taper build before and it also has a decent stamina like Orb. At 4th place, we have Phoenix Wing 960 Rush. Rush build Phoenix Wing is currently the most popular build. It is definitely more aggressive than point builds and Rush has a good stamina compared to other aggressive fleets. It can beat Wizard Rod and it can dodge to outlast the other attack combos. In 3rd place, we have Grand Sword 360 Taper. Grand Sword's stock combo was very popular at least on the first few months of release, but statistically, its best beat is Taper. We'll see in the future if there will be newer bits that can bring it back to the meta. 
the second spot, we have Grand Buster 160 flat. This is a high risk, high reward combo and if you have a good control of its launch, it definitely is one of the top combos. But be warned that if you can't launch it properly, you won't probably consider it as a top combo. At first place, we have Wizard Rodan Ball. There are 4 variants of this combo and I grouped them together so that I can accommodate the other combos in the top 10. This proves how Wizard Rod is dominating the current meta. They may differ only on the ratchets used but all of them do the same job which is to give you a consistent 1 point. By expanding the list, you will see here the 20 best combos of Beyblade Access Year 1. Highlighted in gold, silver and bronze are the top 1, 2 and 3 in that category while blue means it is in the top 10. You will notice here that Phoenix Wing 160R, which previously topped most of the categories, fell down after more battles were collected. We will revisit this again by the end of the year to see what combos dominated 2024. In addition, starting on my next update, I will be filtering out the data collected in 2023 or those battles before Phoenix Wing was released. In this way, the data will be more fresh and then perhaps I will just do a separate video for an all-time best with all of the data. I hope this video suits you well especially if you like attending tournaments. Take note that this is only a guide to help you decide what combos to run. Don't forget that there is an unknown variable of launching skills that was not part of the equation. So depending on your skill level, the numbers can still go up but it can also pull it down. Stay tuned for more stats update especially now that I will be filtering out some data. It will be interesting to see how it will affect the rankings. Let me know how much you like this video through the thumbs up button and by subscribing if you are new to the channel. Please leave any comment to help boost engagement for YouTube's algorithm and join as a channel member if you want to take it to another level. Thank you so much for watching, everyone just keep on enjoying Beyblades and I will see you on my next video.